Good morning. We are glad that you're with us this morning. I do want to just share a couple things with you. Uh, one, uh, we have this little white sheet of paper in your bulletin. If you fill one of these out and turn it in, don't bother about it. But if you have it, you could fill it out and then hand it to me or put it in the offering plate just to give you an update on these classes that we'd like to try to offer to help you in uh, the coming weeks. Also, next Sunday is the fifth Sunday, and we have a Sunday night, a sing separation type of thing and testimonies. If you'd like to be a part of that, there's a sign-up sheet in the back, and we'd ask you that you'd fill that out, and we'd greatly appreciate that. Also, one other update, uh, Gary Cravens had surgery on Friday. Uh, he got out of the hospital Saturday about 5.30. He's home, and he seems to be doing a lot better. So continue to be in prayer for Gary as he's had his hip replacement and we're excited about how God's going to heal him and be, so he'll be back with us. All right, if, this, if you join with us as we worship, we also have a man named Russ Jakes who's been here before, and you may know him, uh, but he's going to be leading the music this week, and uh, be in prayer for him as he leads us. Russ, come and share with us. Thank you. Since this is a little bit different, maybe we'll, I'll like, do a little more explaining than what Gary probably does. It's good to be back with you. Uh, some of you know that uh, I started, was a part of starting this church back in the, in the uh, ballroom. Is, was there anybody who ever went to church when it was still over there? Yes, yes. Uh, so this church uh, has meant a lot to us over the years, and I'm always glad to fill in for Gary uh, when I have a chance. Uh, I want us to begin today by singing What a Mighty God We Serve. Well, I'm, it's not a part, of, I know you're used to singing this call to worship as a part of a medley, and that's not going to happen. There'll be a medley after that. But the choir is going to sing it twice, and then I'll turn around and invite you to stand and sing it twice again, okay? So we'll give them a chance. If they don't do it well enough, you guys can teach them. How's that? All right? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty And we'll invite you to stand, and we will sing it again in that same key, and then uh, we'll change that, okay? Here we go. Uh, we'll sing it twice also. Could, could I hear, since Second we changed, time. could I hear the key, the middle key? I'm fine, ready, here we go. No, that's not. Yeah, there we go. Okay. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. And let earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty Bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you. Great. I have no clue. Anybody know? Did I, did I not do the second one? Yeah, you did. I thought we did. Oh, well. Well, let's forget that. And we'll, <laughs> we'll start our medley. I, this is getting ridiculous for me. Uh, these are three hymns. Uh, you will uh, know them all. 
and we'll begin with Love Lifted Me. Okay?
Let us pray. Fathers, we come into your presence this morning. We want to thank you for your love and your mercy. Lord, we know that there are those who are bereaved, who are sorrowful, but they know that you love them. There are those who are going through a difficult time. Help us to focus in upon you and realize that you care about each and every aspect of our life. You told us to cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. So help us to do that. In the midst of all the things going on, those with joys, those with sorrow, those with problems and difficulties, we come to you, knowing that you love us and care for us and that you will meet our needs and give us the strength to live day by day and do that which be pleasing in your sight. So as we worship you this morning, help us to worship you in truth and spirit and let your name be glorified and magnified. Help us to exalt the Savior who's made a difference in each of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In your bulletin, you'll find a little a yellow slip. And we ask if this is your first time or second time you're here, we ask that you'd fill this out and let us know a little bit more about you so we can pray for you more specifically. On the back, you'll find a prayer request. And if you put down your prayer request, we will be praying for you. Uh, we have that on Wednesday night. We pray through our prayer requests on Wednesday nights. And also there's other people who are prayer warriors in our church who are praying for you. And so if you take time to do that, we will honor that and pray for the people on your list. But we are glad that you're with us this morning. And we just ask that you help us as we sing together in praising God. Our next medley begins with, Oh, How I Love Jesus. I invite you to join me in the choir as we sing this hymn together. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name. Tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, Praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name.
hymn this morning is 349. We'll sing both verses of Oh, How He Loves You and Me. Would you stand as we sing those two verses? Oh, how He loves you and me. start out for thanking you. My name is Randy Byron. I'm a deacon here. I'm the deacon of the week. And I want to start out by thanking you for the honor and privilege of being deacon of the week. God has blessed me in so many ways, and this is definitely one of them. And I love you folks, and I know you love me. And before the scripture reading, I want to point out something real quick. Um, for those of you who do not have a Bible, or if you know someone here or in your community that needs a Bible, You'll notice in the front of the Bible, under the seats in front of you, it says, this Bible is provided by donations to Grand Community Baptist Church. Please feel free to take for your personal use. Psalms 119.11, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. We here uh, at Sun City Grand Community Baptist do not want to see anybody go without a copy of God's word to read during the week. We want to see everybody in our community learn so that they can be blessed by the Lord the, the way that we have. And for any of you men or ladies that would like a Gideon New Testament to carry in your shirt pocket or in your purse, please see me after the service. I have another case of them in the car. You can see myself, Brother Roger, or Jim Oglesby, uh, a Gideon, also a Gideon, one of our new members here, right over there is Jim. And we'd be more than happy to get one to you, plus we have uh, uh, Bible app cards, where if you want to download the whole Bible on your phone, you can do so. It's a free Bible app, and it's both uh, in print and audible, and it's in every dialect. Today's scripture reading is from John chapter 21, John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. And it says, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said again to him a second time, Simon of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend to my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? 
Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And Peter said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Then feed my sheep. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for what a, what a great honor and privilege it is to be into your house of worship again on this beautiful Lord's Day. Heavenly Father, uh, some of us, quite a few of us here that's been saved for several years now, years ago we became a born-again Christian. There's one thing we've learned, and that's that we could never live long enough to match the love that you have for us. We could never live long enough to outgive you. And we praise you that once again we can meet in your house of worship in freedom. Free to carry your word, free to study your word, uh, free to share your word with others as you would have us to do. We thank you for what we've already learned in the Sunday school classes. For our wonderful Sunday school teachers, Margie and uh, Brother Larry and Brother Rick. We thank you for what we're about to learn from this man of God, our associate pastor, Brother Gary Har. We ask for your blessings and your guidance on him. And now, Lord, also comes our time uh, when we have one of the ways to show our love back to you, and that is by giving. And, Lord, uh, you know I mean no disrespect, but I was thinking this morning that if the God of the entire universe could be from one state, he probably maybe would be from my home state, Missouri, because it's the show me state. <laughs> and, and I think about, Lord, um, starting back from when I was 11, I began to see this. You said in Malachi, prove me, put me to the test. You said, show me that you love me by bringing all the tithes and the offerings into the warehouse, and you see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that you'll not be able to receive, shaken down, pressed together, and overflowing. And then, Lord, I see in the New Testament, I saw where you said that you love a cheerful giver. So that if we would stop and think about how good we've got it, how good we've had it, all the answered prayers, all the blessings, and if we would give from the bottom of our hearts to support your ministry to further your kingdom, which is your greatest desire, more lost souls and more Christians so that we have more salt to preserve this earth until your second coming. We know that's your will, Lord, and so I pray this morning that we would all search our hearts. Jesus, if you tarry your coming before the end of this year, we have a lot of things coming up. Uh, and we know that we have to have money in order to make it work. And we know that money's not evil if you're using it in the right way and for the right one. And Jesus, we know, we truly know in our hearts that you're the right one. So I pray that you would help us to give and give abundantly for your cause throughout the remainder of this year. And Lord, we've seen it. Us old timers have seen it how you bless us when we just turn loose with childlike faith and we do that. And because of what we already know that you'll do, if we'll give from the heart, we give you all the praise and all the glory, and we thank you in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.
peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my face shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well, it is well with my Good morning again. I invite your attention to John chapter 21. Just want to emphasize a couple things. Uh, John chapter 18, Jesus is arrested. In John chapter 19, Jesus is uh, crucified. John chapter 20, uh, Jesus arises from the dead. And now we're on John 21. And there's been a period of time, and Jesus has tried to prepare his disciples for what's happening and what's going to happen. And he, he comes to talk to the disciples, but especially to Peter. Now, there are times in our life that we may ask questions, and those questions sound a little bit funny. But there's always a purpose before those questions. I was going to entitle my sermon using the words of Jesus, do you love me? But I thought you might get confused on that. So I've said, do you love Jesus? <laughs> now, Jesus is talking to Peter. And he asks this question to Peter. 
And he asked this question because it's very important. And as we look at John 21, verses 15 through 17, we see that Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter responds three times. Now, as we looked at this passage, the first point I want to make get across to you is that Jesus asked the question three times to emphasize that loving Jesus is very important. Loving Jesus is very important. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we ask you to speak to us this morning and help us to understand how much you love us and care for us. And yet most of us do not understand and we cannot comprehend your love. But you love us in spite of that. So help us to come to a better understanding of how you love us and care for us. Speak to our hearts in a very special way. Open our ears and help us to hear your word. And then help us to live it out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I've only been here about two months, but I know that most of you are busy. We're always busy, busy from one week to the next week, we're always busy. And sometimes we're so busy that we forget to spend time with God. We're busy with church activities, and there's a lot of church activities we can attend. We're also busy with work activities. And, uh, you know, it's not until you retire that you find out how busy you really are. And uh, a lot of people say, I'm going to go back to work because it was easier back when I was working than when I'm retired. And uh, you don't realize how busy you can get. We're also busy with social activities. Now, there's the clubs here in Grand. There's also in, in Sun City West. And there's lots of activities. And there's another thing called, let's see, golf. Uh, there's golf going on. So there's a lot of activities going on. But sometimes we do get too busy to spend with God. Now I want you to notice, I think Peter in this passage is struggling a little bit. He knew that Jesus died on a cross. He knew that Jesus was alive because Jesus had appeared to him several times. But Peter and James and John, what are they doing? They're out in a boat fishing. Yes, they've gone through some emotional bad times. But they are fishing. They're not having a prayer meeting seeking God's face. Rather, they have gone back to their old way of life. And they fished all night. And usually, fishermen, they caught nothing. And Jesus said, throw the net on the other side of the boat. They throw the net on the other side of the boat. And they, the net's full. And Peter realizes that Jesus is on the shore. And so Peter swims to Jesus. They have breakfast, and after breakfast, Jesus asks Peter these questions. It's at this point, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? Now, that's a very crucial question, because Peter was a Jew. And he knew Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 5, that says that we are to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength. He knew that. He also heard Jesus say, love one another just as I have loved you. And then in 1 John chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, it says, if we hate our brother, then we walk or live in darkness. Now, some people think that Jesus asked this question three times because Peter denied Jesus three times. And that could very well be true. But here was an opportunity for Peter to profess that he loved Jesus. Now, can you imagine how Peter felt when Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? Each time that Peter heard that, it reminded him that he had denied Jesus at time. He denied Jesus three times. Now, friends, we could get a little bit personal here. How many times throughout the week do we forget to love our Lord? Are we so busy with our work that we forget that? Are we so busy in the work of the Lord that we have forgotten to love our Lord and Savior? Now, I need to understand that whatever I do, I do it as unto the Lord. Whether I, I sweep the floor or mop the floor or wash dishes, if I drive my car, whatever I do, I'm supposed to do it as unto the Lord. It's important that we understand that. I do it because I love the Lord, and I want to serve Him, and I want other people to know that I love the Lord, 
and that should be evident in my life. I believe Jesus is trying to emphasize that each and every day that we as believers, we are to love Jesus. That's our number one priority. And we need to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Jesus said, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. And so my question today to you is, do you love Jesus? Are you in love with Jesus? You see, we can answer that very quickly and say, well, yes, I love Jesus. Then Jesus will say, will you do whatever I ask you to do? And it's usually at that point we say, Jesus, I don't do windows. I don't do this, and I don't do that. Now, if you're really in love with Jesus, you'll do whatever Jesus wants you to do. And it's important that we understand that if we love Jesus, we'll do whatever he asks us to do. Are you excited to be able to worship the Lord this morning in worship service? It's important that we love Jesus. Secondly, I want you to notice, loving Jesus means that we are seeking those who are lost. Now, Peter said, you know I love you, Lord. And then Jesus said, feed my lambs. A lamb is a new sheep. And how do you get new sheep? You care for the sheep, and then they give birth to the new sheep, and you watch over that, that lamb. As a Christian, we find people who are lost, and we share the gospel with them. By sharing the good news with people, they come to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and they become sheep of Jesus. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Go into all the world, or as you go into all the world, make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. You see, it's important to realize that we are witnesses for Jesus. We're witnesses for Jesus as we drive our car. We are witnesses for Jesus. Whatever we do, we are a witness for Jesus. Now, either we are a good witness or we may be a bad witness. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus said that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to seek out those who are lost in sin. He came to look for those people who needed him. In John 20, 21, Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, so send I you. Do you realize that each one of us here this morning, we are here but we are sent to share the good news with people around us. We have to send out the good news and let other people know the difference that Jesus has made in our life. Now, we come to Luke chapter 15. Jesus has a parable about the shepherd who had 100 sheep. And he comes back to the flock, he brings back to the pen, and he counts the sheep, and there's only 99. So what does the shepherd do? Well, he said, well... That's just one out there. I got 99. I'm going to stay here with the 99, right? No. He went out and looked for the, that one lost sheep. Went out and he searched for that one lost sheep. And he found the sheep. And then you know what he did? He took his belt off and he whipped that little sheep, right? Well, that sheep caused a lot of problems, didn't he? He had to go out and look for it. He picks it up, puts it on his shoulders, and he carries it back. And he rejoices. Because that one lost sheep is now found. He is excited about that. And you see, God has sent us here, and he's placed us where we are, to reach out to people around him, around us, so that we can share the message of hope with them. Now, I want you to notice that Jesus is talking to Peter, who is a disciple. But I also believe that Jesus is talking to each one of us. And he says, do you love me? If you do, you'll be sharing Jesus each and every day. You'll be telling others the difference that Jesus has made in your life. And we must always be on the lookout for opportunities to share Jesus. We have the opportunity to share Jesus, and that person comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We call that a divine appointment. You see, if you love me, you'll be busy sharing Jesus. That's what Jesus says. When I was at Parker, Arizona, we had a, a young lady in our church, her name, she's in about her 30s, but her name was Neil. And Neil, was, she, Jesus had changed her life so much that she was going out everywhere telling people about Jesus and sharing Jesus with everyone. She shared Jesus with her sister, and her sister came to know Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And you know, at that point, they went out to Dairy Queen. And as they went out to Dairy Queen, 
Neil began telling the person, you know, Jackie, my sister, she's accepted Jesus. And Jackie said, Neil, just be quiet. It's my turn to share about Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? It's my turn to share. So this week, I want you to think about, is it my turn to share Jesus with somebody and make a difference in that person's life? It's my turn. And Jesus has given us an opportunity and has given us the privilege to share Jesus with people around us. Then third, I want you to notice, loving Jesus means that we are nurturing. Sorry about that big word, nurturing. <laughs> Vicky's mad at me already. <laughs> but we're nurturing new believers. You see, it's very important to understand this. It's not enough to share Jesus. We are to, committed to nurturing and helping these new believers come to know Jesus and grow in the Lord. You see, when a girl gives birth to a baby, she takes that baby and goes to her next door neighbors and puts the baby on the porch and then walks away, right? She did her job. She gave birth to the baby, that's all. No, it's her responsibility to help that baby grow up and to nurture it. And so often we as Christians, we share Jesus, but we think that's my job. No, that's just the beginning. We need to help those new believers grow in the Lord. We need to encourage them and help them to become what God wants them to be. And some days that's easy and some days it's not. In 2 Timothy 2.2, Paul tells Timothy, And the many things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. You see, we are called to teach others. Now, I shouldn't really say this, but I need to say this. When God shares something with you, it's not just for you. And we don't need to go around saying, I know something you don't know. <laughs> I'm special because I know this. God shared it with you so that you would share it with somebody else. Amen. To help them, to encourage them. And so often, God says something to us, and we don't tell anybody. And then we go, about, about a week later, you know, God shared something great with me. Man, it was fantastic. But I forgot what it was. I forgot what he told me. Now, if I had shared that with other people, then I'd be able to remember. But we need to share what God has shared with us. Because God has not given it just to us. He's given it to bless other people and help other people grow in the Lord. And that's why Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. If we are going to grow, then someone must feed the sheep, or at least lead them to food. And God is depending upon his people, the church, to lead them to food. You see, it's important that we do that. It's more, the shepherd's job is not just to feed the sheep, but he's not only to feed them, but he's supposed to also discipline them and disciple them. The shepherd is to lead the sheep, to set the example for the sheep to follow. The sheep should know his voice, and they should follow him. And the shepherd needs to be willing to lay down his life for his sheep. The shepherd must be willing to protect the sheep. Now, Jesus tells us that there's two types of shepherds. There's the good shepherd, and then there's the hireling. Now, the hireling doesn't really care about the sheep. And when things get difficult, the hireling just runs away. But the good shepherd is willing to lay down his life for the sheep. He will do whatever he can to protect the sheep. Now, Jesus is telling Peter, protect God's sheep. The pastor of the church is sometimes referred to as a shepherd of the flock. The pastor is to shepherd and feed the flock. He's to disciple and discipline the sheep. He is to protect the sheep. And if I love Jesus, then I am to love Jesus with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. If I love Jesus, then I'm out to I am to be out seeking those who are lost in sin. If I love Jesus, then I am to be nurturing new believers and help them to mature and become what God wants them to be. It's so important that we understand that. Now, I've shared this with you, but I need to share something else with you. It's very important. In the Greek language, there are four words for love. The first one, it's not in the Bible, but it's in the Greek language. It's Eros, and that's where we get our erotic books and stuff like that. It's the, the pleasure love, the sensual love, Eros. The second type of love in the Bible, and this is in the Bible, is Fiel, F-I-A-L. 
And it talks about the love that we have for family members. You love your mother and dad. You love your brothers and sisters. You love your aunts and uncles. That's the type of family love. The third type of love is called philos. And that's where we get Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. It's type of reciprocal love. I love you, and I'm nice to you, and you love me, and you're nice to me. If I scratch your back, you scratch my back. And it's kind of reciprocating that type of love. And then the fourth love is agape. And that's the type of love that God has for us. It's undeserved, unmerited. It's a love that uh, is only possible through God. Now, as we look at this passage, Jesus says to Peter, Do you agape me? Do you love me with God's type of love? And it's interesting that Peter replies, Yes, I philos you. I love you with brotherly love. Now, he could be saying that because that's the only love that he knew. And that may be a lot of love that we understand is brotherly love. You do something nice for me, I'll do something nice for you. And we love one another like that. Three times Jesus says, do you agape me? And three times Peter goes back, I philos you. Peter probably didn't understand. And sometimes I don't think we understand God's love. But God's love is there for a purpose. We need to understand that God wants us, and that's what Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. But a lot of times we're stuck with the word philos, and we want to love people with brotherly love. Now, I have a little heart up here, and you know, sometimes we do things, and we say, well, I love God with all my heart. And when you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you say, I love God with all my heart and soul and mind and strength. I do that. But sometimes some bad things happen to us. And so we pray and ask God. And as a new Christian, a lot of our prayers are answered and we're excited about that. But there does come a time in our life when we pray and God says no or says wait. And then when that happens, we lose a little bit of our heart. So God, I love you with all my heart, but there's part of it I'm not sure about. And so we ask God again for something, and God says, no. And so we lose a little bit more. And say, well, Lord, I love you with all my heart, but I'm still struggling because you didn't answer my prayer. You didn't do what I asked you to do. So, well, God, please, you know. And there's some more struggles that we come across, and we say, well, Lord, I asked you for this. And pretty soon we find ourselves a little bit less in love with Jesus. And, you know, as Christians, we sometimes do go through some really hard times and bad times. And we struggle with that. And we say, Lord, I love you, but I don't love you as much as I did at first. There's so many problems, and I've asked you for help, and it doesn't seem to help me. And so we lose a little bit more. I said, Lord, I just don't understand what's going on. And there needs to come a time in our life that we say, Lord, I'm struggling. I believe this is where Peter was. I'm struggling, Lord. I really don't understand love. I don't understand all the things going on. And I'm just going through a difficult time. And so God says, just commit everything to me. Trust me. Turn your life over to me and help me become what you want me to be. And we need to turn our life over to God and see that God loves us and cares for us. And as he does that for us, only God can do this. But God can say, I love you and I'll help you become what I want you to be. And as we do that, we begin to see that Jesus loves us in a very special way. And as he loves us, he cares for us. And he helps us to have a heart. Helps us to have a, a clean heart and a pure heart. And that only comes about when we trust God and say, God, I've messed up. I've blown it. But I want to love you again. Yes, there are times in our life that we become hardened because of so many problems, and God didn't answer our prayer at that point, and God didn't do this, but he still loves us. And we need to realize that there's a couple things that's going on. God says, basically, all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And then he also says that he wants us to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. So God's working things out in our life. 
And he says, I want you to trust me. I want you to trust me with your whole life. It may be a mess right now, but trust me. And if you're here this morning, your life's a mess. We want to encourage you to do what God loves us and cares for us. There's the four spiritual laws. God loves you and cares for you. And he loves you with his whole heart. And he wants you to know the best. But also, you need to realize that man has sinned. And the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means we've done what we wanted to do rather than what God wanted us to do. And then we need to realize that Jesus died on a cross to pay the price for our sins. He died for your sins and my sins. And he says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you need to do one other thing. You need to invite Jesus to come into your life and heart, become your Lord and Savior. And when you invite Jesus to come into your life and heart, he comes in this day. And he's going to stay there and be with you. And he promised never to leave us nor forsake us. This morning, if you come to Jesus with a heavy heart, just ask Jesus to come into your life and heart to save you. If you've asked him into your life and heart to save you, but you have to say, maybe the day, Lord, help me to fall in love with you all over again and give you my whole heart. Help me to love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength, and all my might. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for loving us and caring for us. We may not understand a lot of things, but help us understand that you love us and you desire the best. So help us to live for you and let your name be glorified and magnified in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to stand and sing an invitation. And at that point, we want to encourage you to make that decision that you need to make. Some of you need to invite Jesus in your life and heart. And it's our desire that none leave this place unless you've asked Jesus in your life and heart to save you. We want to encourage you to do that. Some need to come and say, you know, I've been upset with God because God hasn't done what I wanted him to do. And brotherly love, if you don't scratch my back, I may not love you back. But you need to turn your life over to God and say, God, help me to love you with all my heart, soul, and strength. Renew that joy that was once there. And help me become the person you want me to be. Maybe you need to come and follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Maybe you need to follow the Lord and, and join this church. But God is speaking to you. We also have some benches here to come and kneel on and pray. And if you come to these benches, we won't bother you. But we want to encourage you to do what God wants you to do. As we stand right now and sing the invitation, we want to invite you to do what God wants you to do. You come as we sing. I want to thank you for being here this morning. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it can encourage you. And I want to encourage you to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because only God can make a difference in our life. And we need to share that with others around us, that his name will be glorified. Again, there's a sign-up sheet for the next Sunday night from the September 30th. And that program, could you please sign up on that? And uh, be in prayer for Brother Gary as he's recuperating. Be in prayer for those who are bereaved, who have lost loved ones and friends. And just ask God to comfort them. And we're glad that you're part of us, our service today. I also want to ask Jay Cameron if he'd close us in a word of prayer. Brother Jay. Heavenly Father, we have gathered here again this morning, giving you all the praise and the glory. Your word and our fellowship, our church fellowship with each other has refreshed us. And Lord, please bless the financial offerings that we're leaving here and spread your healing 
power and presence to all of those who are sick and homebound. Continue to enwrap your arms around Carmen. And I ask a special prayer for Marie Miller, who had a freak accident. Help her to heal. And bless us, Lord, as we move into another week protecting us. I ask you this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.